Typically, multiple object tracking is based on sensor detections. We have a sensor, or possibly multiple sensors, and from these we get data. Common sensors in multiple object tracking are cameras, radars, and lidars. The sensor data serves as input to a so-called detector, which outputs measurements or detections. In this course, we will use the terms measurements and detections interchangeably. So for example, from a camera data, we typically get image bounding boxes. From radars, we get range, bearing, and Doppler measurements. And from LiDAR sensors, we get so-called point clouds. The measurements that we get from the detector serves as input into a multiple object tracking system, here abbreviated MOT. The output from the MOT system is posterior densities for the object states. And the focus of this course is on this last step, that is, tracking based on detections. One thing that is important to note is that detectors work on a single frame of data, that is, a single camera image, a single radar scan, or a single LiDAR scan. The MOT algorithm, however, it works on detections from multiple frames, and these detections are processed sequentially. So let's illustrate this sensor detector MOT algorithm scheme using an example application. So in this case, the sensor is a mono camera, which means that we have a single camera and the camera is mounted, in this case, on a car facing forwards. The data that we get from the camera is image data. And on the right here, we can see a photographic image at the top. We see the roadway, we see some cars and some surrounding vegetation and buildings. The detector that was employed here was constructed using so-called deep learning. Deep learning is outside the scope of this course, but it's something that's quite interesting and that you can look into after studying this course. The output from the deep learning detector is bounding boxes for the vehicles in the image. So here, these bounding boxes are indicated by colored rectangles that fit snugly around the cars. In addition to each bounding box, in this particular example, the deep learning detector also outputs a measurement of the distance from the camera to the detected car. This means that the output from the detector is somewhat similar to the detections from a radar detector. We get a range measurement, that is, the distance from the sensor to the detected car. And using these image detections, from the location of the bounding box in the image, we can figure out what the bearing from the sensor to the car is. And lastly, the output from the MOT algorithm is posterior densities for the object states. In this example, the object states are position and velocity in three dimensions. And on the right, we have visualized the X and Y dimensions from a top-down perspective, or bird's eye view. So the plus signs illustrate the object position, and the ellipses illustrate the covariance matrices, or the uncertainties of the object estimates. We're going to have a look at some different examples of tracking based on detections. However, before that, we need to briefly mention tracking without a detector, something that is called track before detect, or TBD for short. Now, instead of using a detector, the raw sensor data is fed into the MOT algorithm. One example where this approach is used is in radar-based tracking with very low signal to noise ratio, or SNR. In these two images in the example, we have high SNR on the left and low SNR on the right. So let's have a look at the high SNR case first. The radar has transmitted a signal and some of the signal power has been reflected by an object back to the radar sensor. If we looked at the received power, we see a peak in the data around range equal to about 40 and Doppler equal to about 10. The peak is quite distinct and we could easily apply a threshold to the power of about five or 10 and only keep what is larger than this threshold. This would give us a detection with range 40 and Doppler 10. Now, consider instead the low SNR case on the right. The setup is the same. A radar has transmitted energy. Some of it has been reflected back by an object. However, 
the power returned by the object in this case is not very strong and does not stand out from the background. We can't really see any distinct peak in the data. In this case, if we employed a threshold to the data, we would either get no detection if the threshold is too high, or if we lowered the threshold, we might get a detection, but we might also get many incorrect detections. So therefore, in the low SNR case, we could instead use an MOT algorithm that is designed to work directly on the reflected radar energy and process the radar scans sequentially this way. However, this track before detect approach is not as common as tracking based on using a detector. And because of that, track before detect is not included in the scope of this course. Let's go back to tracking with detections and focus on the number of detections we get per object. And let's do this by revisiting the example with vehicle tracking using images. As you can see in this video clip, there are several cars in the image and we get at most one detection per car. Some of the cars are not detected, for example, the one that can be seen in the bottom left of the image. And we can also see some cars in the very far distance that are not detected until they come closer to the camera. However, most of the cars that are in the center of the image close enough to the camera are detected. So in this example, where we tracked cars using image data, we had either no detection or one detection per car. Let's have a look at another example, which is tracking pedestrians using a LiDAR sensor. As you can see in this video clip in the bottom left here, where we show the detections, there are multiple detections for each pedestrian. We get a small cluster of detections for each pedestrian. And you can also see that when the pedestrians pass behind each other, they become occluded to the sensor. And when that happens, we don't get any detections at all. So in this example, where we tracked pedestrians using 2D LiDAR, we get somewhere between zero detections up to tens of detections for each pedestrian in each time step. And in general, the number of measurements that we get for an object in each time step will depend on the sensor that we use, it will also depend on the detector that we use, and it will depend on the types of objects that we are tracking. And based on this, the different number of detections we get from each object in each time step, we can define some different types of tracking. So what we're going to do next is to have a look at different types of tracking. 